that's not it. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Tuna Status. I got a very, very special guest here, Miss... Crystal. Most people know me as Scream Hollywood, though. All right, cool. So we're going to talk about, you know, growing up within the car scene, building your cars, you know, going into social media, and then just current life and what's next for you and everything like that. Okay. So let's take a, a trip way back. When you first got into the car scene, how did you... How did this all come about for you? The car scene or cars itself? Cars itself. Cars itself. Okay, so when I was one years old, my dad got me a red Jeep. I was obsessed with that thing. I'm talking pretending to work on the engine, you know, detailing it and all that. I used to ride around in the house. Yeah. He even got me, um, you know, the CD, the little Walkmans, mm -hmm. and we put it in the car and I would like blast my little music thinking no I was all shit. ill. And I would not let no other kid touch it. Like he has pictures of me making faces like, bro, chill. Yeah. So and then from there, you know, I. I used to collect Hot Wheels, and then I had like a little um, punch buggy, and mm -hmm. I would keep it in my pocket as like my little good luck charm, and it was yellow as well. And then from there, when I was four years old, I used to go to car shows with my dad at the Expo Center. Mm -hmm. um, it's right here. It's by Southie. Have you been there before? Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. we didn't want to pay for parking, so we used to park <laughs> his um, van in like the complex over there and then jump the fence. Mm -hmm. So like I've always been into cars as a kid. Okay, okay. So it sounds like your father was very influ influential in your very. life and, and, and getting you into this thing. So, and I mean, as a father myself and I have a little girl, I'm definitely going to be asking you some questions <laughs> or getting some heads up as far as what I'm getting into. So let's talk about the first builds. What was the first car you really kind of got into? So I'm still on this build, actually. So my yeah. first build is my bubble. It's a 1995 EG hatch. Yeah. Um, it's currently K-Turbo, but when I first got it, I didn't like it, y'all. My dad found it on Craigslist on 4th of July. We didn't pick it up until the 5th. Um, I actually was more into BMWs yeah. and Toyotas. You know, I wanted an 8086. I asked my mm. dad for his wagon. He had a 3 Series wagon. And I was like, yo, let me have that. He goes, yeah, sure. So I was like, I want it yellow. And he just was not, not having it. with that. Not cause having it? it? Cause of, no, he just wasn't with it. Because I had fell in love with a yellow S2K. I actually kept um, the guy's, like, you know, little contact card in my mm -hmm. room for, like, years. And so I was able to, like, get a car. Yeah. You know, hopefully I get an S2K one day. Probably not. Yeah, no, we're going to make that happen. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. see. Speaking we'll in see. existence, we're going we're gonna to bring that out, you know? <laughs> Amen. But, yeah, so when my dad found the hatch, um, we went to pick it up. It was in Saugus. He got it for six fifty. Like, yeah. the lady was like, a lot of people want it. So if you want it, you got to hop on it. Mm -hmm. So he got down there. He, like, he didn't even look at the car. He literally was like, here you go, man. No shit. And I did not want the car. I didn't like it at all. I wouldn't sit in it. I rode home with his neighbor and his Beamer because I just was not with it at all. <laughs> Damn. So yeah. you're just like, nah, this is not it. And yeah, because I wanted the wagon. Weird. It's weird. For a car you didn't like, you kind of went kind of far with it, mm -hmm. but you know, you made it your own. So at this time, did you <laughs> did you have a nickname for the car or the name for the car? So the car is named... Like, right now is divorce. But the way that I knew it, how my dad presented it to me, like like I said, I was into Bimas and Toyotas. I wanted A86. Keep that in mind, y'all. Yeah. So when my dad was like, no, we're going to get you a Honda, because I used to always like see them drive by my grandma's house, you know, a little bouncing around and all yeah. that. And I was like, okay, I think I like that one, which was the EF hatch at the time. And he was like, we're not getting you that. That's, like, way too old. Mm -hmm. So he was like, it's either between the EG or the EK. But I couldn't, like, really remember the names of it. Again, yeah. I'm, like, a Toyota chick. Yeah. So he was like, okay, so the EG is Tyrese and the EK is Kevin. And then I guess I went with Tyrese because the butt was bigger. <laughs> it's cuter. No comment, <laughs> yo. I, got, I can't. All right, cool, cool. <laughs> so now you have the car and, mm -hmm. you know, how did you end up getting introduced to the scene itself out here? I definitely think my cousin Devonte had a big role in that yeah. because when my dad got me the bubble, he also went and bought Devonte his first car, which was a Volkswagen. Oh, shit. Yeah. So we were just like at that time, like into the cars, like we would go to like um, meets, we'd go to Mass Ave just mm -hmm. to like get ideas, you know, be part mm -hmm. of like the chases. We actually got like, um, you know, arrested low key, but we didn't end up in the paddy wagon, just took mm -hmm. off. 
to the side yeah. of the road. Oh my God, that's a night. That's a night. Yeah. yeah so like just I, going to like Flav and all that, mm -hmm. and like being in like the car scene, going to the meets and all that. That's yeah. what like brought me and my into it. The Flav was a whole vibe back it then. Was. It was lit, man. It was was. It you was know, you lit. get your gas, you fill up your tank real mm -hmm. quick. Back when twenty dollars meant something, and you were chilling. You was outside just. Doing fun stuff, fun stuff, and it was. I used to get home at like seven o'clock in the morning. I know, I'm yo, like, it was, was bad. bad. It was I bad. I was at the races. Yeah, Especially when it was in like that on. Yo, mm -hmm. and niggas would be all night. And the thing is, you would think like, okay, like when you was out there and you had your friends and you know, you know who was running, you know, all stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, the cops came and shut things down, but. If you knew where to meet up, then you knew you was outside yeah, you, all friggin' you knew night. Where to go. You saw some people leave and go home, but mm -hmm. you knew where to nah, go. Nah, you knew where to go. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And he's definitely running back. So, you know. You got Massive, you got Legion, you got that. Oh my God. But sometimes you got Brockton, but Brockton chases. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. some some wild nights. So, what was it like growing into the scene as a, a woman? It was hard. So this was like the era of like JD Mass. It was like a lot of talk of like hamsters. That was the biggest oh thing. God, so when I first came out with the car, like just like the progression of the car from going, you know, D15 to B series to fully built B series mm -hmm. to B turbo to K to K turbo, just that progression like happened like so fast. Mm -hmm. A lot of people felt like, you know, I had to be doing, you know, like whole shit in order to get the car. Which is but wild. It, it, it was wild because yeah. like I built the car with my pops and I thought I was working three jobs, bro. And I was still in college in order to like afford the lifestyle that I wanted with mm -hmm. the car. And at that time, I didn't have no sponsors. Okay. So now the car's outside and it's actually taking you places. Mm -hmm. Like what's some of the things that you got to experience through the car? I went to Cali. Yeah. Because of it. I did. So one of my friends, he actually owns an amazing shop. Um, he hit me up, he was like, hey, um, Scream, do you want to scream Hollywood? And I was like, bro, like, what is this? Yeah. I, I honestly thought it was Cat. But I met with the producer, you know, I spoke to her and all that. Mm -hmm. um, I actually flew my dad out with me because I was like, oh, I don't know, my brother get kidnapped or something. Yeah. I was like very uneasy. But we went out there, we filmed the, like a whole like first episode um, they had me change the tire on a Jeep. Bro, those tires are heavy, man. Yeah? Okay, like, bro, what? Yeah, they had me on. Um, <laughs> I was, like, painting, like, the back of, I forgot what car it was. I think it was, like, a Scion CC or whatever. I was, like, painting some stuff for them. Mm -hmm. Like, it was, like, unfortunately, the network didn't, like, air it. Okay. But just being able to have the opportunity through my car mm -hmm. was dope. That's dope. Mm -hmm. So now... Oh, and the sponsorships, you know? So that's the other thing, too. That's different right now in the scene, like with a lot of companies. You're not seeing really people like stick with sponsorships. And I feel like it's more like, hey, I'm looking for a discount, not mm -hmm. really more of a sponsorship because they will support the product. They were knowledge about the, uh, the product and everything like that. And they would stand by it. And now it's like all you're seeing is maybe a post with a tag. Like, how did you yeah, come about with your sponsorships? And actually, what was your first one that you got? So my first sponsor was Skunk 2. I was actually denied three times, y'all. And again, I'm just someone who never gets gives up. I'm always about shooting my shot no matter what. Mm -hmm. So when I first got denied, instead of crying about it, I was like, you know what, like I'm gonna keep like doing what I gotta mm -hmm. do. So when I first got denied, the car was on NRG bucket seats. Um, I spray painted the interior, I had mm -hmm. XXR wheels, like I'm gonna be honest. It was a clean build, yeah. but I don't think it was at the quality level of other cars at the time, like right hand drive and if you guys know with the green bubble. Mm -hmm. So just like, you know, redoing the car at the time, I think I was like B Turbo. Like I went hand, we got Recaros. Yeah. I went with rear wheels at the time. That's when I got the J lines. I completely mm. did a 360 in order to land that sponsorship. So a lot of people think, oh, you just got it because you're a girl. Mm. Oh, baby, no, no, no. I had to work for that. Yeah, they got to put some respect on your name. Mm -hmm. Shit. So I'm playing with you. So what's some of the other sponsors that you were able to have the opportunity to work with? That was pretty dope. Oh, Mishimoto. Yeah. I just came from H3 for them. I've been a booth guard for Mishimoto for years. Yeah. And, you know, I just love that experience. I'm also working with Exeti. I'm cool with Vibrant. Um, I'm also sponsored by Chase Space. And I can't forget my fave. I love Golden Eagle. Oh, shit. That's a sub. So, mm -hmm. woman's about her work. So, speaking about being about the work, like, now you have the business. How did you come about into now developing a business? So that actually came in a dream. Me and my boyfriend, like, we were just talking about, like, oh, like, we need to start something. Like, we're young. Let's, like, do something, especially with the fact that I have this social media platform. And I was always selling T-shirts. But, like, he's really the brains behind it, talking about, like, let's expand. Let's go bigger. Mm -hmm. So 
it really just came from me and him just sitting down one day and like, what do we see our future like? That's what's up. So being able to tie that and and it seems like everything's pretty fluid. It's like your father introduced you to the cars. Mm -hmm. You now have your car and the car being able to afford you opportunities and experiences and living a lifestyle that it's pretty dope. Um, what do you have to say to some girls that is like going into this, even just wanting to kind of like get in the engine bay and start taking stuff apart? Like, what do you got to say to them as far as getting more confident with that? Honestly, just go for it and stay yeah. true to yourself. One thing I'm very big on as being a female in the car community, no disrespect to the other girls, but I will never like thirst trap mm -hmm. because I look at it this way. I have my dad, I have my brother, I have my cousins, I have all that. And mainly I have these little girls who like come to me like at the events like, oh, can I sit in your car and all that? I don't ever want to send that message like, hey, you need to be half naked, posing on the car and doing all that like their stuff in order for people to respect you in the game. Okay, okay. So now the EG's gone through how many phases? Oh my God, like what, like five? <laughs> <laughs> I think like five. And you've had it for a while, I gotta ask this. Is there a price tag on the car? Never. Never? I've got it all for 10, 15K. Like, yeah. I just can't do it. That's you can't my let baby. it go? That's my baby. I've had other cars outside of that. Like I said, I had an EK Coupe. Yeah. Um, I bought it for 300 bucks, and it just needed a dizzy. Oh, <laughs> we sure. literally hit up the garage like, hey, you want to buy it back? So what's another car that you've always kind of wanted just to add to the balance of it? Well, Ooh, there's a few. Okay, so Evo 8, but my dad actually won that. In a mm. raffle. He paid sixty dollars, so technically I have access to that. Okay. But another car that I really, really want, baby, is the A E eighty six. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what's the color? Break it down to me, because I know you already Ooh, know okay, what okay. it's gonna so look like. It's gonna be like um Yellow. No, not even. Okay. I'm talking right. lavender. Oh shit. Like lavender at the bottom with that little stripe, the black on top. Mm. You know, we're gonna have some like I wanna keep it like the true A86 vibe. Okay. Stock interior. Mm. Now I gotta ask you the icing on the cake. What's the plate gonna say? The plate? License yeah, plate? Yeah, license plate. You gotta get a vanity plate for it. What's the plate gonna say? Don't get gapped. Okay. That's on the hatch right now. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I mean. As soon as it gets on the plates, it gets transferred over. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. That's what's up. So. Now, we've talked about, you know, growing in the car scene, starting the business, and you brought up briefly having support. What's it like now, you know, being a woman in the car scene and dating? Like, what was that like for you? Oh, in the past, oh my God, that was like, it was hectic. Yeah. Because you would have people who weren't supportive of you, who would like put you down, mm -hmm. like, oh, like, you only think you're all that because your car, your car's not all that, you're not all that, there's people better than you. Then you would have those who think that your car is their car and they want to drive mean? it, they want to stunt, they want to race in it. Mm -hmm. So that was just like, ugh, like yeah. it was like really hard because I felt like people just liked me for my car and mm -hmm. not for me. So my boyfriend that I have right now, oh my gosh, shout out to you, you are amazing. Mm -hmm. um, when he met me, I didn't introduce the hatch at all. No shit. No, because I wanted him to get to know me for me. Mm -hmm. And then when he eventually like, you know, got to meet the bubble, that's yeah. how I look at it. Yeah. You know, he didn't really care for it. I was like, oh, that's dope. No shit. And I love that because he's just like, you know what, that shoe, you know, you do your thing. I'm going to support you. He's really about like motivating me to do better and go out and get it. And I love it. So what's it like now finding the balance? How do you find the balance between the passion for the cars, the business, being in a committed relationship? How's, how do you find the balance for all this? Honestly, having a second person there. Yeah. That is like the greatest thing because I feel like... If he was to have the business by himself or I was to have the business by myself, I feel like as a person, mm -hmm. it's kind of like overload. Mm -hmm. But having like two people do the business, it's just like a breeze of fresh air because he handles like literally all the marketing and all mm -hmm. that because I am not the greatest <laughs> of that. So he's amazing of that. He's amazing yeah. of like looking at new products and those type of things. Mm -hmm. So I got to ask now, who's the better driver in the family? What do you mean? Driver, me and my dad, or me and my cousin. Who are we talking? All three. If all three y'all got a line, I'm gonna give it to me. What you mean? Oh my god, I'm here we go. Here we go. Like, me and my dad, we ran it back in the day when he had his Bima, his wagon. Mm -hmm. But again, like, this was back, um, damn, this was years ago. I don't even think I was turbo yet. I yeah. think I was honestly still like a single cam. Mm -hmm. It was in front of the Volkswagen dealership in Braintree. 
And, you know, it's raining. He's like, yo, let's run in, let's run in, let's run in. Mm. We threw out. I'm like, nah, I ain't trying to do it, man. Yeah. Come on, it's raining, bro. Yeah. Nah, he was with it. We took off. Obviously, he got my shit. I'm just spinning. Yeah. So, we talked about the car, but there's also another side. Mm-hmm. How's bike life? Yo, I love bike life. Yeah. You see the little twinkle in my eyes? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I love bike life. What? I was never actually into into cars as mm-hmm. a kid like yeah i loved cars but when i got into motorcycles oh obsession but i used to take us to the shows and they'd be on the little dirt bikes in like the circle cage yeah. and my eyes would just be locked yeah i had a mini bike as a kid i actually used to race my neighbor she had um a go-kart mm-hmm. yo i used to race her like crazy up and down the street yeah. um one time i actually like tried to take a shortcut i flipped over like a tree branch scratched my back on like a stale um fence what? I mean, I came home like, Dad, my back. He's just like, all right. He grabbed whiskey, boom, we good. Oh, my God. Old then, school vibes, bro. Yeah, and I was obsessed with Baby Boy. Mm-hmm. That's my, not Baby Boy, Biker Boys. Biker Boys. That's my favorite I'm movie. not going to lie, yo. You know the scene in the ring? I Where know. he's like, mm, like that? I, I tried know. it. <laughs> <laughs> yo, it did not work out. I actually landed under, I forgot whose car it was. I landed right under the car. I was like, damn, bro. Yo. I have no. It's one of the movies in life that you watch that you just keep on watching mm-hmm. over and over. like, it's yo. My movie. I found that movie on YouTube, yo, and I was just like, yeah, they had it for free. I was just like, yo, mm-hmm. I'm watching this. And ever since then, I I, don't, I can't even. It's a this, classic. That don't be a menace, men's society, mm-hmm. like all those movies I've watched over and over and over again. Like and even weird ass movies. Like I saw this movie. I don't know why I even like this movie. This shit. I don't know if you know, but it's called Fifth Element. Nah. Nah, yo, that's a weird ass movie, yo, but I just I just always kept on watching it over. So I, I get it. I get it. But I've definitely seen Biker Boys like probably like ten to fifteen times. It's just crazy. I love that movie. Yeah, it's it make, dope. makes sense why I like yellow. Yeah. <laughs> you're like right, it's all you're coming right, together. Right. Like everything I've ever owned so far has been yellow. Mm-hmm. Like my first motorcycle, technically it was my dad's. Um, he actually left the keys at home one night, and then I was like, you know, just YouTubing it real quick while he was at work. And, you know, I went, I taught myself how to ride. I fell, and I ran, I grabbed my neighbors, helped me lift the bike back up so my dad wouldn't know. Mm-hmm. And then eventually, you know, the bike became mine, and I bought my Yamaha, which was the R1, which was yellow. Mm, so how do you like the R1? Yamaha or Jason? Yamaha all day. All day? Personally... Okay, so Yamaha, I feel I'm like a you, Yamaha sit, you, you sit better. Yeah. Jigsaw, I feel like you sit more like that. Yeah. I'm not really into it. And it's more like a wide body, so your legs mm-hmm. are more like that. While the Yamaha, I don't know, it's just more comfortable for me. And I just love R1 because, you know, that the play, LM, you play with it, ones, it's fun. The new ones, the LM, oh my God. I saw, I remember the first time I saw mm-hmm. one was, it was the 2020, and I saw it in like 2021. You know crazy? I don't like the new one. You don't like the new one? Like oh, school, I love. Baby. I think oh, that's I know, but the new one's so sad. What gets me is the fucking the tail. I love it. Oh, what? You're killing me, yo. And that bitch all carbon fiber. I'm a carbon fiber. I love it, yo. I don't know. I don't know. It's something about old school that I love. I like my it. favorite car is the A86. Yeah. I love old school. You right. You right. You right. But I, I still say it's hollow. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so. You know, we talk the business, we talk relationships, we talk cars. I mean, what's 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 going on currently in life? Currently in life right now, mm, let's just say I'm a dog mommy. Yeah. You know. Okay. I love you, Ace. Um, I just lost my other girl dog, unfortunately, and that really like put like a step back into me. I was really like sad at one point, so mm-hmm. right now I'm really just trying to get back into social media, get back into YouTube, you know, grow the business and see where it takes me. Okay, so you say YouTube. So how's the social media channel with that? Okay, so years ago, your girl was popping. Yeah. But, you know, I let a lot of people get into my head and and it made me, like, feel like, you know what, maybe I am doing too much. Mm -hmm. Um, I would go to shows and people like, oh, let me get a photo with you. And I'm just like, no, 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 no. Like, you probably have never seen a photo of, like, me with somebody. Mm -hmm. Because I just just wasn't with it because I was very, like, shy and I felt like, damn, like, I don't want people to think, like, oh, I'm, like, corny or I'm doing mm. too much. Yeah. But now, looking at it now, I'm like, yo, like, I could have been in my bag. Yeah. Like, I was doing something that, like, I loved. I loved doing mm. YouTube. You know, I was at the top with my social media and all that. And, and you was in your own lane, I took a too, hiatus, so. just to put it like that. Yeah. And, you know, I'm coming back to it, and I'm happy. Like, just doing YouTube, it just brings happiness to me. 
-hmm. Not because like for attention or anything like that. So I don't want people to get confused, but it's just something that I personally just love doing. Mm -hmm. I went to school for journalism. So I love doing like photography, video production, being in front of the camera and all that. Mm -hmm. So YouTube is just the outlet for me just to like express myself and express the build. Yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. I can respect it. So now we moved on. We talked about the cars, the lifestyle, current lifestyle. Now what's next? I will drive. Yeah. Yeah. I will drive. Yeah. Then what about power though? How much more? You want more power? I want way more power. What? Yeah. I ain't happy with 500. No. Nah. Years ago in 2017, you know, a bone stock K making 500. Yo, that's lit. I didn't even expect it. So mm. when my car was actually going to the dyno, I didn't go. Yeah. Because like, we didn't even think it was going to make that. I thought it was going to leave with like 300. So I told my mm. homegirl, yeah, you go with it. Mm-hmm. And now so, I'm like, damn, okay. Yeah, so now, okay, so let's put a little goal on it. What are you really shooting for with the power? What numbers do you want? I want eight. You want eight? Eight's healthy. Eight's healthy. I want eight. And it's also crazy because that car is light as hell. I know, but see, this is the thing. It's either now or never. This is how I yeah. look at it. I'm getting older. Mm. I took like this big, crazy break from the car. Yeah. And I really just want to enjoy my build. Like, I don't really care for like the cameras, the fan. Like, I don't really mm. care for that. I really just want to have fun with my car now like mm-hmm. before i like go into having kids and all that yeah. like i just want to be able to enjoy it and do me because my plans for the car literally five years ago was to track it mm-hmm. i've always been on that progression to get that car ready for the track mm-hmm. and then when i took the break it just like slowed how me close down. were you to that oh yeah super close yeah super close so now, now I'm just redoing it, going back through the car, fixing mm-hmm. what it needs. I'm actually going to get a cage done mm-hmm. probably within the next few months and go from there. All right. We're leaving the show cars. We're leaving it. Yeah, nah, yeah, I'm nah. I'm excited. Trying to go back outside, yo. A yeah. big shout out to High Boost. Okay. That has been my number one builder throughout this, like, whole process of the hatch. Mm-hmm. You know, even before he was, like, my mechanic, yeah. he used to look out for me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I love that. And it's become family. So That's High Boost up. for life. Um, what's next for the business? For the business? Oh, we are talking about expanding. Yeah. We definitely want to create some type of storefront mm-hmm. and we want to possibly go into events. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. That's little what's up. by little. That's what little I by little. Myself. I like that. I like you know, that. Because little by little. You dream and you turn the dream to reality. What I tell people is that little by little allows you to remain consistent. Correct. And that is the biggest thing is consistency because it's anything from... Health, fashion, fitness, work, um, personal goals that you want to see in your life. As long as you can stick to the little by little, it'll definitely allow you to be consistent. So definitely looking forward to that. Um, now, we speak to, we spoke on your father and your relationship with him. I mean, how influential is he for you as a woman in life? And, My and, and, dad is, like, a big inspiration to me. Yeah? Yeah. Like, it seems like you guys are really, like, locked in. Yeah, like, yeah. that's my guy. He actually just bought an EK Coupe, and we're looking to put a K-Swap in it. Mm-hmm. And my dad is, like, what, like, 50 something years old? Like, mm-hmm. he just motivates me because it's, like, he don't care what people say. Yeah. They be like, yo, Lou, you too old. Stop building. Stop, mm-hmm. you know, like... That man got like five cars already. Yeah, that's and gonna they, be me. That's gonna be And he me. just loves like collecting. So yeah. like just seeing that and his like ability to be true to himself, like I admire that. Mm-hmm. And he's the type of person when he goes to a car show, he ain't looking at only the VIP. Mm-hmm. He wants to see the cars in the grass. He oh, wants I've to see seen him in action. And yo, and it's hot as hell outside. Mm-hmm. And I seen, I was just like, yo. He wants to see everything because mm-hmm. he admires all bills. So that really like, you know, inspires me and allows me to be creative as well. Cause we'll go look like, we'll leave like the VIP area and we'll go look at the cars and be like, yo, that's cool. How can we do something similar to that or better? Like mm-hmm. we just get a bunch of ideas and we like, kind of like, bounce off of each other mm-hmm. and then outside of cars you know my dad is probably the most like sweetest teddy bear of a person for you matter if you're saying that but he's, <laughs> he's, yo, just, but he's really a cool ass dude yo because i met him with, yo i met him and we was just mental, like, like yo we walked when we was walking like at some standoff and like there was another event that i saw your dad i think it was mine and like we was just no it was definitely some off. he was just a real cool mm-hmm. ass dude he like he was everybody. chilling yeah, yeah, but he's everybody. also quick, bro, with the jokes. Like, he's not, so, yo, <laughs> he keeps you on your toes. So, shout out to your pops, bro, yeah, for real. Yeah, we have like, a little, like, a cook-off, guy. a little cooking challenge. It's like, oh, I make mm. that better than you. So, it's just, like, it's a vibe. Also, it's real competitive. Between me and him, yeah. So, I'm like, oh, I can do that better. Oh, like, we've just God. always had the type of energy. And then my mom is just, like, someone who's just very supportive. Mm. Like, I'll be afraid to do something. And she's just like, go out and do it. 
That's what's up. Mm-hmm. So having a real support system was critical school to just helping you grow as a person. That's dope. Yeah, That's like, dope. honestly, yeah. And then having, like, my boyfriend with the business and all mm-hmm. that. It's just, like, a full, like, I guess, yeah. full circle. And it's just dope. So now let's go into, you know, the current scene and things like that and where events are and even, you know, other people's cars on the scene. Is there any women out there that you see now that are, have built their cars from the past or currently in it that you recognize that you, I mean, you honestly want to shout out? Brandy. Yeah. Sis, you killing it. Um, Queen V-Series, I love you, Aaron. You're dope. Mm-hmm. Um, who else? Yo, there's just so many girls. There's a yeah. girl I follow on IG, Jap BS. I don't even know you, sis, but that Seggy is fire. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of girls out here doing their thing. And I feel like a lot of times in the game, people always feel like, oh, you're a girl. That's the only reason you got mm-hmm. what you got. You got the followers and all that. And for a while, I honestly thought that. Yeah. I, like I said, I would go around. Like, I didn't want people to, like, mm-hmm. associate me with the car. Like, just, just focus on the car. Yeah. Like, don't worry about me. And looking at it now, I'm like, yo, there's a lot of girls in the scene who don't like get the flowers they deserve yeah. their builds are fire and then it made me realize like you know what it's not just my car people rock with it's mm-hmm. also me as a person yeah. so it's allowing me to like come out of my shell like show me more mm-hmm. yeah. so what do you want to see more for the girls that's in the, the community because it's it's like they're out there and i've known some personally mm-hmm. over the years and stuff like that but they don't really get highlighted and when they do step into the light limelight unfortunately there is some negative connotation it's like oh yeah she got all these parts because only fans or some dudes and fools see that's why i would it's never like be weird. the type of girl who like their straps yeah like i know there's some girls and they be like oh it's not their serving they're comfortable in their sexuality yeah. amen i respect to you that's you but me personally the way i see it is like there's little girls up and coming mm-hmm. i don't ever want them to think that oh you got to take your clothes off to be in front of the car and all that for you to get some type of respect in the game yeah. But as far as like the girls in general just building, just keep building. Mm-hmm. People are going to talk regardless of what you do. Yeah. You could be at the top, you could be at the bottom, baby, they're going to talk. Mm-hmm. So you just got to be able to, you know, just be comfortable in your own skin. And it took me a long time to realize that. Yeah, because like I had Cassie up here recently and we were swimming and she was saying herself like she's had those moments where she's like, damn, I kind of like want to take the wrench to it and work on some parts, but then, you know, the friends would laugh and then she would go back to, like, being insecure about herself, and those are real moments. So You get really insecure as a girl and the thing, because I feel like it's harder for us. People are more judgy for us. Yeah, they nitpick. I feel like with guys, they judge Mm -hmm. at the level of quality. Mm-hmm. And girls, with girls they judge at that. like the whole persona of everything mm-hmm. and the details of it. It's like, yo, they're harsh on you guys. Like, mm-hmm. oh, well, she got three piece wheels. Well, and they don't look this. I and it's like, it's like you guys got to go category. the extra mile. It's wild. It's like, mm-hmm. okay, she got three piece wheels, but is her fitment on? And it's like, okay, but you ain't asking this question for the dude right well, next to me. And it's like, it's weird. the car shows and they have that award, Best Female Ride. Mm-hmm. I hate that category. Yeah. I've won that category multiple times. And honestly, I don't like it. Because it's like, is there a Best Male category? No. There's not. And I don't, I feel like, let the car talk for itself. Mm-hmm. Because if I put my car next to another guy's car, mm-hmm. yo, my car's fire all day. Yeah. But the minute you hear it's a girl's car, oh my God. Like, yeah. no, I don't like that. I don't. Have you ever judged at a show? I've never judged. I would love to be a judge. You love to judge? I would love to judge because I don't feel like the gender really matters. Let that build talk for itself. Mm-hmm. Because I want people, like, when they look at my car, critique me. Yeah. Be hard on me. I might got something My bumper's messed up. Tell me. I know that. Yeah. You know? But the minute you know it's a girl's car, like, it's like, oh, gazing. Yeah. Nah, bro. For what? Yeah. So, as we're moving on, and like I said, I appreciate you stopping by and oh. really taking the time out. And, and this is about giving flowers to the ladies and really just, you know, I respect you. And I know there's people within the community that respect you and what you've offered to the scene and sacrifices made and hardships and everything like that. So, I got to ask these final two questions, and I ask this to everybody. One for you, what was your favorite year in the car scene, or just for you in general? For me in general, when I was D-Turbo. Yeah? I drove that bad boy everywhere. 
I'm yeah. talking state to state to Jersey to Foxwoods. Mm -hmm. I love that beat turbo, but mainly because I built that car. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't do like, you know, the specs of the motor, but you know, I sent it out. I bought the parts, you know, it was 10 to 1 Wheatsville Pistons. We had Eagle Rods in it, mm -hmm. Super Tech head package. Like I took my time in like designing that car. And like I I just loved that like time. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you know, that motor didn't last. Yeah. But you know, it was still an era, and I love that B Turbo. People mm -hmm. hate me for saying it because, like, you're K. Shouldn't you love your K Turbo? I know, I know. I mean, I do. It's yeah. faster. But remember when that uh, was, like, really a thing? I mean, it still kind of is. But before, it was heavy when K it was like. No, but when I went K, nobody was K. Like, I know. It was foreign to I us. I know, I know. Like, we didn't know what we was doing because when the B Series went, literally mm -hmm. that same week, we went out, we bought a K. It was like, for the long block, it was like 900 bucks. Mm -hmm. K 28 2. Me and my dad, we got it. Um, my cousin and we like we popped it in and all mm -hmm. that. Yeah, we didn't know what we was doing. Yeah, we went through four map sensors. The fuse box caught on fire. The car went in limp mode. It jumped timing. Oh my god, bro! And I was just trying to get to IFO that <laughs> week. <laughs> That's Honestly, a rough week. That's I didn't a rough know week. what I was doing. I still got to be there sitting right there on the floor. I'm just like. Why? That's crazy. That's that's a that's a rough mm -hmm. week. That's a rough week. Yeah, but definitely the B Turbo. Mm -hmm. I loved it because I was able to like, I don't know. I think I just loved it more because I I built that setup. Mm -hmm. I had like this attachment to it. Even on YouTube, my favorite video is my B Turbo video. Yeah. Mhm. Mm so what year did you put the time on that? That was twenty. Twenty thirteen, twenty fourteen. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it was a so now we're spreading out because yo, honestly, the amount of guests that I've had up here so far, a lot of people saw them about twenty sixteen era. And sixteen was like it was dope. It was a vibe. It but was like, dope, but that old school. Yeah, vibe. the right the right before. Plays, yeah, I know the right before. That. Yo, oh my god. That, that was, was an fun. era. Yo, you know how much my insurance was back then, yo? That shit like was <laughs> what I know, I know. <laughs> I, I ended up in that driver's retraining crash. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, like, dude. Like, that shit times. sucked, yo. Yeah. That shit sucked. To the yo. point like you kinda of remember the answer. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yo, that shit's crazy. So also, as we're wrapping up, the second question I got to ask you is, and not to be morbid, I always give a disclaimer just because new guests watching and, you know, prior guests and everything like that, but it's just speaking on facts, like, what do you want to be known or respected for at the end of the day, you know, amongst your peers, coworkers, friends, people within the scene, people not in the scene, people watching this for the first time seeing you, people that have known you all your life, like, what do you want to be known or respected for? For someone who never gives up. Yeah? Yeah, because even like throughout the build, all the obstacles I face through the B Turbo, the hardships with the sponsors, just like the general bullshit that I dealt with that car, I never gave up. And like even like through college, like um, my teachers didn't really think I would get to college, mm -hmm. you know, because I went to uh, all like minority middle school and all that yeah. and high school. And it was just like, I remember when I first applied for college, she was like, are you sure you can compete at that level when I went to Hofstra? And I was like, That's what? That's wild. Yeah, so it was just like, I'm just someone who's all about go go get it. Yeah. Never give up. And I want to, like, inspire, like, other girls, even, like, guys, bro. Mm. Like, as a female, like I said, you don't got to be naked, bro, to get respect in the game. Yeah. You, you really don't. Let that build talk for yourself. Communicate with people and all that. And just mm. go get it. Communication is serious. Serious. But it, it's hard. But, you know, we all we all grow through it. But so once again, I really appreciate you taking your time and coming out here and chopping it up with us. Um, let them know where they can find you at. Scream Hollywood. All right. Cool. Cool. And all right, guys, make sure you all follow her. I'm going to put all her information in the description box below. Sure. Show some love, some support. Check out her socials, all that stuff like that. And if you see in person, say what up. All right. Don't be weird, but say what up. <laughs> and don't slide in the... Don't, Please all right? Don't. don't. No, 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 we're not doing that up here. That. Yeah. So, to the next time, y'all know the vibes. Stay up. Stay blessed. Peace. Peace.